assalamu alaikum hope everyone is good uh, in the last lecture we discussed that how we use the per unit to calculate the three phase short circuit current in this uh, case we are again using the per unit system but we will not be using the conventional method of calculating the three phase short circuit current we will use the thevenin uh, theorem to calculate this current that is three phase short circuit current so or we can see we will be doing the fault analysis of loaded system using thevenin theorem loaded system means before the occurring of the fa uh, fault the system has got some load and it is supplying some energy to the load and this is usually useful because loaded system uh, using of uh, this uh, normal uh, circuit terms the loaded system is slightly difficult as we have discussed in the last class we cannot say it is more difficult but it takes more time but using the thevenin theorem it is very simple but if it is unloaded system you can use any of them they don't have any uh, advantage over one another but as per the experience you have got in the previous classes thevenin theorem make the questions very easy so here also we'll use the thevenin theorem to calculate the short circuit current let us say we have a simple system this is xg dash uh, sorry a generator whose sub transient reactance is given by xg dash and then it is connected to a bus but i have forgot forgotten here to mention the transformer because this definitely it will step up the voltage to any particular value and then the transmission line again a step down transformer uh, we have nominated this bus and we'll calculate the bus voltage of VT over here. And this is a synchronous motor whose sub transient reactance is given as XM double dash. So its equivalent circuit will be given this. This is the equivalent circuit of the generator. This is the equivalent circuit of the transformer T1, which is which I have forgot to mention over here. This is the equivalent circuit of the transmission line. Again, equivalent circuit of the transformer 2. Equivalent circuit of the motor from here to here. This is the terminal voltage VT at the terminal of the motor. Or we can say at the bus to which the motor is connected. So before the fault, it is connected like this. And this is the current that is flowing from generator to motor. Uh, we can call this a pre-fault current. And this is the voltage of uh, in the bus to which the motor is connected that is vt or we can say it is the pre-fault voltage vt so by using the simple KVL, we can uh, relate this eg dash eg double dash and vt by using KVL in this loop so eg double dash will be equal to this voltage plus the voltage drop across these reactances so it will be equal to vt plus i into xg double dash into xt1 into xtl into sorry plus xt2 multiplied by g because all the all of them are the reactances similarly em double dash will be equal to em double dash will be equal to this voltage voltage minus this voltage drop that is vt minus i into xm double dash so these two are the simple equations which we have calculated by the kvl in this loop first loop and the other one is this in this loop so let the fault is at point F. We assume that the fault will be at point F, that is the terminals of the motor. Uh, terminals of the motor, to, or we can see the bus at which the motor is connected. The equivalent circuit will be like this. There will be no difference, only thing is that a short circuit will appear across F and then this neutral. So in this case, you will see that this is the current that is supplied by the generator, which we have calculated earlier as well. And this is the current im dash im double dash this is uh, contributed or supplied by the motor in this case you can see it from here since this is short circuit uh, from f to this let us say this is n there will be no contribution of current from the motor to this current similarly there will be no contribution of current of generator to this motor current i can see that this im double dash will be simply equal to em double dash divided by x g x m double dash there will be no contribution of these reactances because of this short circuit current similarly this ig double dash will be equal to eg double dash divided by the total reactance of this path there will be no contribution of this reactance 
So from here, I can write it KCL at this point F, it will be IF is equal to IG double dash plus IM double dash. And from the circuit and from this loop, IG double dash is equal to EG double dash divided by JX, G double dash plus XT1 plus XTL plus XT2. Now we'll put the value of EG dash, that is the value of this voltage from the equation first. The equation first is given by this, that EG dash, we have to replace this EG dash by VT plus I into this uh, summation of these reactances. So this will be like this. So by simplifying it a bit more, you will see that this will be VT divided by this term plus I because this term and this term is same, it will cancel out. You can see from here, it will be equal to IG divided by IG is equal to VT divided by this term plus I. Similarly, or I will calculate this, IM double dash is equal to EM double dash divided by JXM double dash. So this is during the fourth, which I have told you. There will be no contribution of this circuit in this circuit. So I am double dash will be equal to E M double dash by G X M double dash. So this is E M double dash by G X M double dash. Now from here, we will put the equation two. That is this equation. I will replace the E M double dash to, uh, by V P T minus I into X M double dash into J. So it will be V T minus I into J X M double dash divided by G X M double dash. So it will be simplified to this equation. Vt divided by Gxm double dash minus i. So from these two equations, we can calculate the value of the ig double dash and im double dash. <coughs> so if will be the summation of these two currents. If that is the fault current. So adding three and four, if that is ig double dash plus im double dash it will be equal to this plus this. This and this will cancel out. It will be total this i. So if will be equal to taking Vt as comma. It will be this equation. So you'll see from here this equation, we can represent this equation by simply a circuit where we have a voltage source of Vt and we have the two branches. One is this branch and there is this, this part. You know that by using the KCL at any point, we write the KCL into the current and these currents will be equal to, let's say IA is equal to IB plus IC. IA is equal to I, let's say IB plus IC. And this IB may be written as in terms of voltage and currents and uh, voltage and reactances or impedances and this current will be equal to voltage divided by reactance. That means we can represent it by a circuit whose total current IF will be equal to uh, a voltage divided by this reactance and under voltage, say voltage divided by this reactance. That means these two reactants will be in parallel with the voltage source, this VT. We can represent this by this circuit. You can see it here. You will see that this current IF will be equal to this current. The direction will be IG minus is like this, and the direction of this current will be this. So IF will be equal to IM double dash plus I, IG double dash plus I. It will be equal to IM dash plus I, IG double dash, which we have already calculated. You can see this is a parallel circuit. This current will be equal to IM double dash plus I will be equal to VT divided by XM double dash. And this current IG double dash minus I will be equal to VT divided by this rate. You can see it from this equation. Sorry. From this equation, IG double dash minus I. When I take this I to this side, it will be IG double dash minus I will be equal to VT divided by this rate. Similarly, IM double dash plus I will be equal to VT divided by GXM double dash. So that's what I have written over here. And I have make a parallel circuit, two parallel circuits and which are parallel to the voltage source. And the direction of the voltage source is very important because the fault current is flowing from F to N. F to N. That means the direction of the voltage should be in such a way so that this F is connected to the minus of this uh, voltage Vt and plus is connected to the neutral of this voltage, sorry, neutral of this circuit. So keeping this in mind, you can see that what we have done, nothing but we have short circuited the voltage, two voltage sources and they, these reactances are in contact the way they are connected in the actual circuit uh, and one, the, uh, the other difference is that in place of a short circuit we placed a voltage source of vt which is the pre-fault voltage at the same point with a different at that time this vt was positive here with respect to this but this time it is this is positive and this is negative the polarity is reverse so this actually equal circuit at the fault circuit which we have already drawn so after that, it is very simple. We can calculate the uh, 
heaven and impedance heaven and impedance between the f and n that is a parallel combination of this and this total uh, reactance of this so we can see that this is vt again this is if this is xth or zt that is equal to xm parallel xg dash plus xt1 plus xtl plus xt2 <coughs> so this is actually the total re uh, reactance or theorem reactance between f and n this is very important that's why based on this it is named as a theorem theorem it can be shown like this because you can see it from here i can take it out from here to here and i have put it over here above f and the circuit is then completed around this loop there is a particular reason why i have done this because sometimes you can see from this point to this point i have shown in the actual circuit there uh, short circuit where there is no connection or you can see no other impedances between fault and the neutral but sometimes we may have some fault impedance between the fault and the neutral that is because of the arcing that is because of some other things which may come between f and n which result in the increase of the fault impedance that's why we have i have written it uh, like this that impedance will be there that f will be there that's the fault impedance <clears throat> usually it is not there but sometimes it may be there so we generalize the circuit like this so in that case this will be in series with this voltage source and it will be connected between uh, this voltage source and the neutral like this and this is the total uh, equivalent circuit of this or the circuit of the fault uh, fault circuit uh, where we have a vt that's pre fault voltage in series we have zt it's the total impedance of the circuit and in zf that is fault impedance some fault impedance may occur between f and f f and n so this i that th is the seven impedance between the fault point in the ground that is f and n so if <coughs> will be or isc fault current or short circuit current sometimes we may call it as a short circuit current as well so this is how a simple circuit can be converted into thevenin circuit and after that we can calculate it as Uh, value of the fault current and then we can calculate from the fault current we can calculate this im dash and sorry uh, this ig dash minus i and ig im dash plus i we can calculate i will show it in the example first let me first summarize these points in the, in the procedure first what will we do we will obtain a reactance or impedance diagram in perun after selecting a suitable mv and kv base that we know we have to first convert in the perun system then identify the fault point we have identified in the previous circuit fault point as f and n like this f and n then what will we do we will short circuit all the voltage sources all the voltage source will be short circuited like in this case there is no voltage source there is no voltage source and place a voltage source vt sometimes it may be called a v post Uh, pre fault per in per unit pre fault voltage at the fault point between the fault point and the ground with positive connected to the ground and negative connected to the fault point which we have already discussed and done that is we have to uh, calculate this vt that is the uh, pre fault voltage at the same point and we have to connect this pre fault voltage again at the same point but in such a way so that negative is connected to f and positive is connected to the n just to have the same direction of the fault current calculate the thevenin impedance between the fault point and the ground that is this thevenin impedance that is parallel combination of this and series combination of this or we can say series combination of these four uh, are parallel to the this xm it will result in the zth which i have connected over here so this will be zth between fault point and ground so calculate the fault current fault current will be equal to vth by xt h vth is the sorry vt is the thevenin voltage uh, at the point of the fault before the fault and xth is the uh, this thevenin impedance between the fault point and the neutral sometimes if we take this as the voltage at the fault point to be base it comes out to be equal to 1 in that case it will be simply 1 divided by xth if the base is something different from the this uh, the bus voltage or the voltage at the fault point this vt will be different from the one so we have to use we have to use it uh, the exact value in the previous numerical we have we actually use vt is different from this because the base and the voltage at this was different we'll see that 
this was that that question which we have already done by using the simple circuit analysis a synchronous generator a transformer transmission line second transformer and motor so this was it is rectangle diagram where this is e g double dash this is x g double dash this is x t1 this is x t l this is x t2 this is x m double dash and this is e m double dash so from here we have calculated v naught to be equal to 0 0.86 ap so in this case you can see that it is not equal to 1 so v naught means in the previous uh, equations we have written vt in, in place of v naught so vt will be equal to 0 0.86 at angle 0 degree we have taken this as reference uh, okay so i will come back to this so its circuit will be like this you can see it from here this and this will be same 0 0.15 0 0.10 0 0.08 0 0.10 0 0.15 and em dash you can see this is 0 0.15 0 0.01 0 0.08 and we have short circuit the both voltage source and put that vt that is the for this voltage default voltage between f and n at this point and connect negative to f and positive to n this is now very simple after that the summation of these three will be equal to 0.43 yes 0.1 plus 0.1 is 0.2 0.28, 0 0.28 plus 0 0.15, 0 0.13. So I have kept it over here, and 0.15 is here. So the parallel combination of this and this comes out to be this 0.43 into 0.15 divided by 0.58. It will be equal to this. So total current IF. That is here we have to use the VT divided by XTH, or that XTH comes out to be VT is already calculated. That is the pre-fault voltage 0.868. It comes out to be minus 7.81. You can see this is the same value which we have calculated earlier in this example by using this minus 7.81 per unit. This is the same value. So this is this. After that, we'll calculate. This comes out to be I. I is the pre-fault current. So I G double dash will be equal to V T divided by this value plus I. That is V T is now 0.8688. This will be 0.43 plus. This is coming out to be after simplification 1.6898 at an angle of 70.1 you can see that this is also the same value 1.689 uh, at an angle of 7 minus 70.1 this is exactly the same value similarly we can calculate im double dash that is vt by jxm double dash minus 1 give the value it comes out to be 6.25 at an angle of minus 95.2 you will see that it comes out to be it's also same so i hope you have understood it let us try to do another problem so that it can it becomes more uh, clear to you uh, in this case it's not a loaded system it's an unloaded system i want you to be familiar with the unloaded system and in case of unloaded system you should not use the value of this uh, uh, this thevenin theorem still you can do it with ease but i will show you how to use the thevenin theorem to do and uh, to calculate the fault curve of an unloaded system so we have a two generators g1 g2 that are two generators they are rated 15 mv 11 kv this is rated 15 mv 11 kv and 10 mv 11 kv this is rated 10 mv 11 kv the generators are connected to the transformer as shown this is a star, step up transformer named as t calculate the subtransition current in each generator when a three phase fault occurs on the high voltage setup transform that means at this point the fault occurs and we have to calculate the uh, this subtransient current at this point and at this point so since x double dash is given that is the subtransient reactance is given if we use the subtransient reactance we can get the subtransient current if we use transient reactance we get the transient current if we use the steady state reactance we get the steady state current so in this case we are asked to find out the subtransient current and we are given the subtransient reactance so when we use the subtransient reactance we get the subtransient current now its equivalent circuit will be like this the two generators are connected in parallel like this this is the equivalent circuit of the generator one equivalent circuit of the generator two equivalent circuit of the transform and the fault is occurred between this point and this point that is the identification of the fault which we have discussed in the procedure of the thevenin theorem <clears throat> so let us take base as 15 mv and 11 kv to convert it into a per unit system so <clears throat> the reactance of the first one will not change because it is already calculated on the same base but the reactance of this value will change its <clears throat> base mv will change from 10 to 15 but base key remains the same 
So, <clears throat> by using the change of base formula for the position system, its value will be equal to 0.1 into 15 divided by n into v2 by v1. v2 and v1 is same, so that will be equal to 1. I have not shown that. So, it comes out to be 0.15. So, it is 0.15. It is 0.1. This is 0 0.06. Again, it is on the same base because 15 mv, 11 kV on this, 66 kV on b, it will not change. So, it is perhaps 6%. Is it is yes, 0 0.06 per unit. So the equivalent circuit will be like this. So the second point in this case is to find out, is to short circuit the voltage source. The voltage source is short circuit over here. You can see it here. And then we need to calculate the fault current, that is I, fault current I, since it is, uh, sorry, pre-fault current I, since there is uh, pre-fault current I is zero, so it will not change, and pre-fault voltage. Now using this, before the fault, this point and this point are disconnected. They are open circuited. You can see it from here. Since its value is 1 per, uh, one per unit angle 0, 1 per unit angle 0, when you use the KVL over here, there will be no current flowing in this circuit. So what will be the voltage at this point? Same with the voltage at this point with respect to this. Since there is no current flowing in this, you will see that this voltage will be same as this voltage with respect to this. That means pre-fault voltage will be 1 per unit, 1 per unit with respect to ground. So I have written that. Directive Vt is equal to 1.0 per unit and the polarity will be like this because the fault current will flow from F to N, it will flow like this. Now we'll calculate the ZTH. So XTH or ZTH will be the parallel combination of these two in series with this. Parallel combination of 0.1 and 0.15 will be this. It comes out to be 0 0.06 and it will be in series with zero this reactance. It will be total reactance will be equal to 0 0.12 per unit. So fault current will be equal to Vt divided by XTH. And this Vt here is equal to 1 per unit will be equal to 1 divided by J 0 0.12. <clears throat> it comes out to be minus 8.33 per unit. So fault current in this circuit, in this part of the circuit, in this part of the circuit, this will be IG1, IG2, sorry, this will be IG1. So IG1 will be calculated by using the current divider rule. It will be equal to this multiplied by this plus this multiplied by fault. That is fault current multiplied by 0 0.15 divided by 0 0.25, it comes out to be J5.0 per unit. Similarly, IG2 will be equal to J0. Point, sorry, 8.33 into 0 0.1 divided by the summation of 2, that is 0 0.25, it comes out to be minus 3.33. You can calculate this also, this 8.33 minus this, it comes out to be 3.33. Now, you, <clears throat> I will ask you in the interaction to calculate the fault current in the actual value. So, in the actual value on this side, on this side, primary side of the uh, transformer, secondary side of the transformer, the fault current supplied by the generator one, the fault current supplied by the generator two. I will ask you in the interaction class, I'll stop here, but please be prepared in the interaction class. I'll be asking these three currents, IF, IG1, IG2, uh, in actual values, in amperes. Okay, thank you.